Good morning, I'm Erin Montoya, CEO and Second Chief Financial Officer. Good morning, I'm Mauricio Gaius, and I'm the online marketer and lead web developer. Hello, my name is Jennifer Lopez, CEO and Second Secretary. I'm Lancy Vasquez, and I'm also a secretary. I'm Alex Sandoval, CFO and Second Web Developer. We are Relation Fresno, and we are dedicated to the journey of changing one's mind, heart, self, and way of life. A few years ago, I was struggling with depression, and I was thinking about committing suicide. I didn't see the point to continue suffering if nobody cared. I felt completely alone, and the thoughts were the worst torture ever. Maybe if I was smarter, better, prettier, skinnier, more athletic, just more, I would feel wanted, I would feel loved. I began to starve myself to feel better, but I eventually did get better. But the ratio of people who have depression versus those who get help is terrible. So this is why, with the knowledge and experience that I have, we wanted to implement that into our mental health gym and help others feel better as well. We understand how not everyone is alike, and this is represented through our logo. As you can see, it resembles a sun. And the different colors show how not everyone is alike, and the different sizes of the triangle show how everyone can find their perfect fit through our mental health gym. Now, the problem is that so many teens go undiagnosed with depression, and this is because they don't know the first step to take to help themselves or that it is too expensive. Now, our solution is to have an affordable mental health gym with different rooms with natural remedies inside to help these teens cope with their depression. Our target audience is 13 to 17 year olds because this is the age where they start to recognize their emotions. I can completely relate to this because I started to recognize my feelings as a gay man. I didn't know who to turn to without judgment. Because of this, a lot of teens don't go to the best places to their health. So our biggest, hurt, our biggest competition is people not getting help. Not only the competition people who need help, but also parents. Some parents believe that depression is not real. Teens don't have the support that they need to get help. And on their own, they don't know exactly where to start. So this is where we come in because we help ease people into the process of getting better through natural remedies that our mental health gym will be providing them. So for our total market size, the starting figure is $14,400,000. And this is based off of one hour radius for Fresno. An example would be Fresno to Madeira. From there, we calculated the amount of teens there are within these cities. From there, we narrowed down the number by calculating how many teens are actually depressed. For a serviceable market, is $5,313,600. And this is based off, off of how many teens actually get help. Lastly but not least is our market share. Our market share is $300,000. And this is based off of how many people we want to aim within our first year. Now the other competitors such as therapists, we find ourselves more of a better alternative because we provide more of a hands-on experience that no other therapist can offer. We combine all types of therapeutic solutions into one building so teens can go from talking to an on-site therapist, to relaxing in a relaxation area, to playing a game with one of their friends on me being a part of relation. Now, for one example, the relaxation area. We'll have these teens go through a meditation process that is scientifically proven to help these teens cope with their stress. I have even been doing a scent therapy to help myself calm down and de-stress. Now, once their stress is gone, that is when we can tackle their depression. There is no other place like this in America. Our MVP findings were that there wasn't enough marketing. A lot of people had said that they wanted to go to our event, but they didn't know when or where it was going to be. We also tested out one of our food items that we wanted to have in our mental health gym. We sold 25 fruit cups and parfaits. We made a profit of $165. We also promoted it at Fresno State and Fresno City. We adjusted by creating a stronger marketing plan and setting goals for each and every day. Our Instagram over a month's time period has grown over 144 followers. We already have a group of people who have said that our Instagram has improved their life in some way. We will have a total of, a t our total estimate for a year is $72. This includes Facebook ads that are gonna be posted on our, on our target audience's Instagram stories and Instagram feed. Facebook gives more options and suggestions to specifically target our demographic. Our ads will have a total of 200,000 impressions. Imagine how much more people we could possibly help. We're planning to partner up with hospitals and clinics, and we're also going to promote our business with middle schools and high schools by placing flyers and using simple word mouth to promote our business for free. Our website is another form of promotion where our customers buy our membership and sign up for our email list. It only costs $12 for a domain and free hosting for a 12-month plan. We will have a total of 200,000 impressions, and out of that number, 20,000 of our customers are going to buy our membership. 
For our financial projections for year one, our revenue is estimated to be about 345000 and this is the same for our gross profit. Our SG&A expenses will be approximately 30000 and our taxes for year one will be 60000 Lastly, our net income will be approximately 252000 and we plan to have a steady growth of 5% through year five. We will gain revenue by selling our memberships priced at $50, and this is based off of the results that we got from surveys that we did at Fresno City College and the research that we did on the average price of a gym membership. Elation is looking for $125,000 for our funds. The use of these funds will be for our startup costs, so finding a place and leasing it to host our events and buying the things that we need for our events, like the yoga mats for the meditation and the scents for the scent therapy. In exchange for $125,000, Elation is 15% um, ownership in the business based on a post money valuation of $866,000. For an exit strategy, we're looking to start our company at the end of five years. And this, and with this, the investor will get 40% in return. There will also be a money multiple of 3x. This is because we want our mission of helping teenagers with depression who are dealing, who are coming with us and our mental health issues to feel better and get better. And we also want to live our mission, which is to help all depressed teens within our communities with suffering with mental health with health diagnosis and to feel better. So you may follow us on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Fresno, or visit our website at elationfresno.com or email us for further information at elationfresno at gmail.com. Thank, Thank you. you. presentation I especially like the website uh, I thought you guys did a great job on that um, I noticed there were some videos on the website I thought uh, those, those might have been useful to weave in uh, to what we have here um, and then um, I uh, I really like the part where you said your biggest competition are uh, uh, kids who are, who are uh, coping with their uh, issues in different, with different methods than uh, the ones that you guys provide. I thought that was a really astute uh, observation about um, the competitive landscape, and it's that's not always not not every business kind of has that uh, has that com competition. Normally, they're competing against other other types of established businesses. Um, I one thing that stuck out to me about the model that you're presenting, I kind of wanted to ask questions about how much you thought thought about this part was um, I think I think you know you guys have, have conveyed your personal experience with depression and you know that it's it's a it's a very serious thing and it has a lot of uh, other uh, kind of parameters to it that uh, actually some of them fall under uh, government and, uh, and health regulations um, and, and laws and I was wondering if you guys had done much research into that if you could speak to the research that you had done and how you uh, kind of uh, had planned on uh, uh, covering, assessing and covering the liabilities that pop up when you do run a business like this. Okay, so we were looking into the legal obligations a little bit and we're still trying to research that, but when we get therapists on site, they'll obviously have their consent forms and the forms that they normally use with their group that they partner with. So we were going to try to implement that with our own business and have the parents sign a waiver saying how they agree with us giving their child help and things like that, so we're still looking into it. Okay, cool, well, yeah. I guess that go along with that is like uh, confidentiality when you have a patient provider relationship and all that. Um, and finally, uh, the conversion rate based on the impression seemed really, really high. Um, okay. I was wondering uh, if you could kind of speak to the methodology that was at work there. Okay, so. Um, based off of the last time that we pitched our idea, the feedback that we got was we had a goal that was too high for year one. So uh, we kind of uh, lessened that by saying that we wanted a conversion rate of 10%. So if we were to reach 10,000 people within our first year just by through social media or a website, we wanted to have 10% of those people actually buy the membership and come and get help with us. So we wanted to help at least 1,000 people for year one. So that's kind of what we did. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. So your five-year plan, 
you, as you just described, is, is to have a thousand customers, but $350,000 of income in your one. That's $350 per person, right? Yep. That's, um, who's going to have that kind of money? <laughs> the revenue also comes with the food that we were planning to have in our mental health gym because um, we estimated that a person would spend maybe one to two hours once they come in. Like, if they were to come in once a week, they'd spend one to two hours there per day for that week. And so uh, we figured that we would need something like food or a drink to, for them to keep going there. So uh, that profit also comes from that part of it. Okay, because I'm not really clear if you, you talked about being kind of like an online presence and, and resource and help, and then also having this physical building which you're going to rent and whatever else, and, and your, your, your finances for which you can do this $125,000, is there's just no, not enough detail to, to understand how that money's gonna be used. Because I, I think you, you don't even talk about rent, startup costs, you wanted to have a facility. How much is that going to cost? And then to fix the facility to to be a nice gym, a <laughs> health gym? Yeah, so we were looking into different places that we wanted to buy around Fresno and Clovis. So we found a place, uh, the rent was approximately 7800 per year. So um, we calculated... Per year? Per year. Per month? Per year. Uh, the rent per month... Um, yeah, oh, oh, well, yeah. $7,000. Yeah, so that was per year. So we calculated that into the 125000 that we were asking for, but I guess we just forgot to put it in the packet. Okay, so for $700 a month, you're going to rent some place. How big is it? Because you're talking about having 4,300 people go to this facility for $700 a month? That doesn't sound very realistic to me. The space that we were looking at was a approximately 1,300 square feet. Uh, that was just to start out so that we could uh, go through further testing and uh, build a, a customer base. And I, I hear what you're saying, and, it, and just the economics don't seem to quite have been worked out yet. At least okay. it would be really nice to have a spreadsheet. Because what you're talking about is, is having an astronomical jump to 4,000 memberships in year one, and at year five, you've only had a you know thousand more per year. So why why would you have a growth up to four thousand and then it just stays flat? It doesn't seem very realistic to me. And usually, you know, you start off small and you can grow if you have a successful idea. Okay, um, the memberships were calculated for how much were bought within the first year. So based off of the 1,000 people that we wanted to gain by the end of first, the first year, uh, the memberships that were bought were like per month. So How much per month for a membership? It was $50 per month. $50. Mm -hmm. So, but that doesn't quite make sense. If you have 1,000, I'm not, the math isn't working out for me. So it's $50 per month, $6, $600 a year, but at 1,000 customers, you said 350 per person. So I'm, I'm not sure where you're, you know, a good Excel spreadsheet showing you, you know, what you're, where are you going to get your money from, from per customer, how many customers, you know, that, that doesn't seem to be worked out adequately. Okay. And um, you put your TAM in, I think you described the TAM, right? Yeah. In dollars. How, how did you come up with dollars for a total addressable market? What are those dollars mean? Okay, so we started off by projecting how many people are depressed within those cities, and from there we're thinking about how many people from there will buy the membership, and we turned each person to fifty dollars. From there, we created the number. Fifty dollars or six hundred dollars. Fifty dollars is per month. For each person. Right. Yeah. So, but you're saying per year, your total addressable market is oh, yeah, per, per year. year. So. Yes, fifty dollars a month, and we multiply it by twelve since there's twelve months in a year. From there, we got the number, and we added up to how many people will be there. Yeah. Okay. It, that wasn't really clear. It'd be, it'd be useful to have your to explain your total addressable market and your serviceable market, whatever, by like people and money and a total, right? And 
your marketing cost of $72 is, you want $125,000, but you're gonna spend $72 on marketing. I, I, mean, I think you can understand that. It sounds a little unrealistic, right? If you're gonna invest $125,000 in your business, you're gonna to need to spend a lot more money for marketing, not $70, it's gonna be $7,000 or something. dollars. Um, and how did you get to an $800,000 valuation? That was calculated through the spreadsheet that we used. So um, based off of the revenue and the projections for year one, uh, we plugged in those values. So the pre-money value um, plus the 125000 that we were asking for got the post-money value. So there was a multiple, and typically when you do a valuation of a business, you look at, you know, Profit, I mean, because I, I think you guys are being taught different words than I'm used to as far as gross income, revenue, gross profit, and net income. I'm a little confused at how you're using those words, but usually you have uh, an earnings multiple to a valuation. So $800,000, what did you use as like a multiple for this business to calculate what your projected earnings were? I, didn't, I just did the math didn't make any sense to me. We, um, we did come something completely different than what you were describing. So the post money uh, value that we got was based off of, it wasn't really based off of a multiple. So. I think it was, you just don't call it that maybe, but I mean, you're gonna, you have to take earnings and you're going to say, hey, the business is worth $800,000 because it's going to generate this much profit, okay. right? I'm still just not very clear why you need to have this outside gym. It seems to me that an online presence and resource and networking connection to people that have shared issues and challenges is an excellent opportunity where you don't have to go out and rent a facility and, and you know buy all these physical assets and whatever else. That's a big challenge. It seems like what you're talking about is connecting people and helping them with resources to get over some of these teenage angst issues. Right? So why do you feel, what is the reason you have to have a physical presence? Scientific studies show that um, being online and talking to other people that have gone through the same thing does help, but only to a certain extent. We're trying to get the teens past that so that they can feel better longer because if they truly have a mental illness depression then they won't just get better by talking to someone who is experiencing the same thing and sharing tips so that's why we felt that we needed to have an actual place so that they can learn different things to help cope with that and so that when they get really stressed or when they get an anxiety attack or something they have something to do somewhere to go so they can get take themselves outside of that stressful situation and get better Right, but your investors would be taking a pretty big risk in doing this, and so when you see as an investor more risk, you you expect to have a greater share of the business comparative to the risk. So my question to you is, you know, perhaps you could do that by events, where you don't have to rent a facility full time because you have lots of you know, energy costs, security costs. I mean, the, the cost just. Uh, why couldn't you do this at some sort of facility like a, maybe even a hotel or a restaurant where people meet in a meeting room at a restaurant and you hold an event there? Where you, hey, you know, we're having a meet and greet and, and we'll all share ideas and, and have some guest speakers or something. Did you consider that model? Um, we were considering that to begin with, but like I stated earlier, we just felt that we needed a place so that the teens can have somewhere to go to all year round so that they didn't have to wait for a certain time of month or every couple of weeks to go get help. But we will definitely consider that. Yeah. That's all the questions I had. Yeah, um, yeah, I think you guys all did a great job. Um, I like the cohesiveness of the outfits and the presentation um, and the thoughtfulness that you guys put into your logo. Um, I thought that was very nice as well. Um, I also uh, really enjoy the concept of what you're trying to do and kind of taking it offline and providing kind of a sanctuary. Um, mine are more, uh, I think a lot of the questions regarding cost um, and, and structure and stuff were addressed by Bob uh, that I, I also shared. Um, and then I, after 
I think it took more digging into the pamphlet to understand that than that was actually presented. So just kind of wanting, um, I appreciate that being there, but uh, wanted to get a little bit more of the presentation for that. Um, some other kind of uh, options, uh, I understand that the long term with the year, but potentially um, you can sublease your space. There are other groups within Fresno um, that could potentially use um, some of like the Zen rooms um, or some of the facility that you have, not only for the membership, but also to like other groups in the area um, to uh, gain some additional profit there. Uh, and, and in addition to kind of following what Floyd said, um, there could potentially be grants um, or donation based from other uh, groups in the area uh, that you guys could link up with, um, government grants for uh, mental health uh, that you could look into as well to get some of that funding. Um, but I think overall, excellent job, and I, I hope that you guys can continue on this and, and look for a space. I know um, in the meantime to get you up and running, that there's places like Common Space Fresno, um, or even Bitwise that would be you know willing to uh, get you guys up and running for initial meetings. You know while you're looking to rent your own space, so definitely encourage you to continue with the plan. Thank you. Thank you.